Hey. How's it going? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Okay, perfect. What's going oh. on? How are you? Good. You look good. Thank you. You too. Listen, I was like, I'm going to try to get dressed up for one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This has been pajamas all day. <laughs> how, how have you been since this whole thing has started? So we started quarantining March 10th, and we've been in it heavy since then. So we, I live in an area where there's like a park so we can go out and, and walk and stuff, but this has been a, this has been a time. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> wild. Crazy. How about yourself? Uh, you know, it's good. Yeah. Thankfully, like work has been crazy where it's like you're so consumed with all of that where you kind of are distracted. So it's not too bad, you know, the mind doesn't wonder so, so much. But um, I don't know, I'm like, I hate it and I love it at the same time. I'm like, I'm loving the being home and, but I also hate that when I'm like allowed yeah. to be outside. The internet. Yeah, listen, if anything has taught me, if this has taught me one thing is that technology and myself really, we're not, we're not friends, I will say. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm terrible. I'm like, Zoom, it's yeah. Technology is not used to us uh, leaning so heavily on them. Um, so exactly. they're like, they're ready to act up. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> He's gonna move yeah, everything on us. Like, yeah. So we're holding everybody down now. Okay, got it. They're like, cool, cool, cool. We'll rise to the occasion. Great, great. <laughs> they, they try and they try and they try and yes, yes, Speaking of technology, appreciate it holding us down <laughs> netflix has been holding us down real crazy <laughs> during quarantine i know listen everybody's looking for something bingeable you know past the time i feel like i've seen every last thing on netflix by now <laughs> i know which is why i was so happy when i got the little notification that i got season two of your amazing show politician oh thank you thank you uh, so much i mean you are just so much fun the whole i mean the whole crew of you guys for me particularly are just a lot of fun to watch on the show it's just so digestible um talk about the first time uh you were offered the role and how the process was i guess you know i offered an audition tell me what the process was like for you becoming part of the show okay so the process was um my manager had um you know submitted me for the role of sky um, and I went in to do an audition, um, and I thought it went well, but I didn't hear anything for like two weeks, and I was like, ah, oh, rats, could have been mine, um, and then finally, I got a, um, a call from my manager being like, hey, they really liked you, they want you to come in for a callback, and I was like, real, uh, Ryan Murphy wants me to come in for a call, <laughs> I was very excited about that and just that you know at that point I didn't really have anything to lose this is my first thing I was like you know if I get it great if I don't at least I got a callback for a Ryan Murphy production and hopefully they'll keep me in mind for something else um but I went in for the callback and in that room was literally um, Alexa Fogel who's a casting director Ryan Murphy Brad Falchuk Ian Brennan so I walk in and I'm just like oh. Okay, <laughs> this is cool. Um, and they asked me if I was ready to go, and I did it. And I was really proud of myself that I was able to, you know, perform in front of these big heavy hitters. And they said I did a job well done. And I didn't hear anything for about for about a week. And I was like, oh man, once again. Ah. And then finally, I got the call from my manager that I got the part. And then a week after that, I was in LA shooting season one. So it was a it was a wild ride and um, I wasn't sure if I was going to get it. And then I was like, yeah, I got it. And then I was like, I don't know if I get it. And then finally, finally I got it. And I was like, oh, okay. So now I have to actually do the work. So yeah, it was a whirlwind for sure. Right away. Did you know, like, cause it seemed it was so, it's so well thought out and so well constructed and so well organized right away. Did you know from season one, to season two, like how big your role was going to be or like some of the storyline? So they set it up really well from season one. I'm sorry, can you repeat some of that? It was breaking up just a little bit. No worries. I was saying that um, the, the show is so well structured. Going into season two, you really knew like what was it going to be about. How far in advance did you know how, what season two was going to be about? Um, how far in advance? Um, so 
we so when we got the um the last episode of season one um it was about maybe a week or so before we actually started filming it um so it was obviously the direction that it was going to go in and we thought that it was um a brilliant way to kind of do like a uh, it was almost like a pilot the last episode of season yeah, yeah it was season cool season one, right so it automatically lended itself um uh, to people being intrigued for a season two because it very much felt like a pilot for the for the following season um or the first episode of the following season so i think that lended itself to people really uh honing in on the story and kind of wanting to come back for more but we we knew about a week or so before we actually started filming season seven the trajectory of season two and um who was going to be involved but we didn't necessarily know the ins and outs the twists and turns we are uh, uh, constantly left you know on edge as to as far as like whose loyalties lie where and, and, and things like that and then once we're all reading it we're like oh you did what oh yeah so it's <laughs> it's, it's 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 a fun ride to be on i will say um you have such a, an amazing cast and the amazing producers amazing directors you had a couple of really awesome directors this season talk about some of your favorite directors working with on this past season um, I would say that I loved working with um, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Horder Payton. Um, she uh, directed a couple of our episodes in season one, and she's just so, just so brilliant in her in her in her notes in her direction. She's always like two or three steps ahead in terms of like the shot is concerned. And I learned a lot from her as far as you know, pacing and a tone. And I felt very comfortable to, to play and to, to, to ad lib and to, to make it uh, my own and to make my own choices. So I really loved uh, working, working with her. Um, yeah, she was the absolute best. And then you have the brilliant Ryan, of course. Oh, we'll talk about something you learned from him this past season. Ryan uh, Murphy? Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the big guy? The so big guy. He, he didn't um, direct um, any of the episodes in season two, but he did the uh, pilot in uh, season one. And to be honest with you, like the first, the first time I stepped on set and the first thing I ever did was being directed by him. And I was like, how do I do this without shaking? How do I do this? Um, but he was just so, um, open and warm and professional and just was like give it to me let's go you got it like just I felt very empowered with having him um, as a director and he is very collaborative and um he just loves actors and I think that he's like the biggest fangirl in the world like he wants you to do so well and he is just unbelievably, unbelievably supportive and um it's like working with a with a with a giant, you know, you're just in awe of everything that he says and does, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, been, that, yeah, that's totally right, Ryan. It's great. You're just every, you're just on every word of his. But um, it was surreal, I will say. I mean, you, there's so many juggernauts on the show. I mean, like, I mean, Bad and Gwyneth oh. and Dude, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. Can, can it get any more star power? Just like it's so many powerful, especially and they're all women too, which is amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, all, all powerful women. Just like, like I can only imagine, uh, just being in awe the whole time on set, just being around you, these people. You're absolutely correct because Bette Midler is is my my queen. I have uh, her record up here, uh, the Divine Miss M. You know, oh, I, Do, I hope you got it signed. I, I listen. I, <laughs> I was like, is it okay if I asked Bette Midler to sign this for me? I didn't get her to sign it, but I showed her my Betty Davis tattoo. She loves Betty Davis too, so that was okay. Cool. okay. Um, but watching her and she's just full of obviously just just talent, just bursting at the at the scene. Mm -hmm. She approaches me, and you're just like, what? And then Judith Light, who is one of the most charismatic people I've ever met in my life, just unbelievably kind, welcoming, warm, and brilliant. Watching these two women uh, work was inspiring. Um, and their performances in this show are stellar, funny, 
um, you know, you have a lot of empathy and uh, just beautifully done. And they work so well together. It was a lot of fun to be a part of. I mean, yeah, I get jealous, of course. <laughs> just pure jealousy. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, going into the season, how much were you able to put of yourself into your character, you say, or vice versa? What did you take away from her personally? How merged is it at this point? Like, I feel like you put how um, your personality. You know, it's funny. It's funny to ask. Yeah. Um, Sky is a very, very, very vocal person. Um, Sky will speak her mind no matter what, doesn't care about hurt feelings, none of that. Um, and as a person who, whose voice I felt over for a while was, um, I, I wasn't necessarily comfortable in my own voice and speaking and, and um, feeling that anybody cared about anything that I had to say. Sky really, really, really helped me to kind of look at myself uh, in terms of what I was putting out there and willing to put out there. Um, she gave me a lot more confidence, which is wild that a character um, that you portray can really have an effect on you. Um, it's like, how can I be more like Sky? you know? Uh, and in this moment, of, this moment of, of an uprising, I'm like, let's pull in a little bit of Sky and, <laughs> and use your voice and, you know, and, and speak about some real things. That's what Sky's doing. And, uh, yeah, she's actually helped me a lot <laughs> in terms of finding who I am. And I think that I connected with her initially aesthetically. And we've had very similar, you know, lives in terms of, of, of how we present to the world. But um, yeah, we've slowly become ingrained. I think I'm a little bit more um, uh, nicer, <laughs> a little bit nicer, um, not necessarily murderous. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that she's definitely helped me to be a strong person for sure. Oh, well, you know, it's so funny. I, I felt like Sky this season was, um, she had a higher morale, like, than she Absolutely. did last, se last year. I thought, yeah. like, she was just like, you know what, I was involved in the FRE last year, and I want to, like, do better. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Talk about that kind of character arc from, from that previous season to this season. Yeah, well, I think, well, in season one, we're all, uh, we're all teenagers. We're seventeen, and then we y'all some grown seventeen. We some, we some <laughs> old seventeen year olds. Let me say, I was like, grown. all right, all right. Let's see if I can pull this one off. Um, no, but just the, not even like in the the looks of our like. You, there's the things y'all do, and just like yeah, the the the, 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 the 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 causes we were talking about. Yeah, it was like some forty year olds, seventeen year olds for sure. Um, um, but I think this uh, sky is older for sure. Sorry, I hit my hit my no, makeshift good. desk. Um, <laughs> um, oh. which is which is a far cry from how we saw her in season one. So I appreciate the uh, the trajectory because uh, you know some people are like we hate Sky. She's so mean. And I was like, damn. I know. I'm like, where? <laughs> I just got some things to say. I'm sorry. I know, right? You shake the table a little bit, and they just like, well, you know. <laughs> just, I mean, Sky still has some things to say, though. Like, like, you know, she's not gonna be quiet. That's the thing. <laughs> no, never. She's yeah. never, and she wasn't meant to be quiet. Uh, exactly. Never. Sky in the show, she goes in a little bit of the community, uh, and she focuses on outreach and like the inner city, and she's become she's sort of a, sort of a, a guest, a speaker. She's, a, you know, she's. She's talking to the kids and she's influencing them. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about, or paralleling now to the real world, the importance of like mentoring youth and letting them know, you know, just like you can relate and this, I hear you. Um, you know, I think that, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a, a, a heavy question. Yeah, um, so I, I went there. Sorry. <laughs> right now, I'm just getting my thoughts together. Um, I mean, I think it's definitely something that we see right now. Um, causes are fought generationally, you know. Um, we saw, you know, the civil rights movement, movement of our parents and grandparents. Now we have this movement here in this moment. And then we have the, the youth that's coming after this. So as far as uh, 
progression is concerned, let's say racial relationships, um, it is important that we reach out to our youth and empower them to use their voices because we're going to need it when the time comes. So um, as far as me reaching out to the youth, you know, I, I don't have that big of a platform, but I am going to use my small platform to try to encourage people that look like me, girls that are, that are, that are gay, that are um, masculine of center, that uh, you matter in this world and you matter in this space and you matter and your voice matters and your life matters. And um, I love talking to little kids being like, I never saw myself on TV and then I saw you and I love hats too. And I'm like, who me? <laughs> like it's the sweetest thing in the world, but I do think, think that in the corniest way, the children are the future <laughs> and they're, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna lead us. And like I said, our, our, our battles are generational. And I, I feel that it is important to connect to, to the youth of today. And hopefully a show like the politician and, 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 and seeing people like me and inspires people to, to, you know, want to be more visible. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, that, that was good. That was good. That was a, that was a word. <laughs> that was a whole word. Um, uh, it, it is, uh, we're going into Pride Month. Uh, how are you celebrating this Pride Month this, this year? Well, I know it's hard to celebrate in, in a time like this, but I think it's yeah. important that we do. And how do you plan on doing that? Um, you know, I, I've always, obviously, I love pride. Um, it's just a, a time to just celebrate who you are. And um, I try and celebrate who I am month after month, not just pride month. But I think this time around, it's like um, the intersectionality of, of being a black gay woman. It's like I'm celebrating all that together. Right. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to be jamming out to some music. You know, I am getting uh, married in October, God willing. Uh, yeah, so, you know, <laughs> What's that the dance the kids are doing on TikTok? All right, I can't. I can't, I can't do it. Do it. <laughs> I, I'm gonna break my neck. She <laughs> will. Um, <laughs> but um, just just being in a space with my fiance and just celebrating um, celebrating the movement in the moment and the intersectionality of 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 my experience in this community and uh, you know, it's start it's already started, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I love that, um, especially in the current times today. It's important to like have the, the small moments. For sure, it's important. You gotta have a little yeah. bit of levity and a little bit of celebratory um, nature um, in the midst of, of um, uncertainty and change. Oh, definitely, um, 100%. Um, back to Netflix, other than The Politician, of course, mm -hmm. what else have you been binging these days? Oh, what else have I been binging? You know what? Let's talk I, about it. I love 90 Day Fiance. I will really? say. Okay. It's not Netflix, but I will say that uh, really invested, especially 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. It's fascinating to me. It's so fascinating. There's some people that I'm like, girl, you are getting catfished. Come on. We know these things. Um, and it's just hours of me, uh, my, my fiance and I just sitting on the couch yelling at the TV. Um, as far as like shows are concerned, I watched Hollywood. Um, oh yeah, another Ryan. Uh, I'm a, a love of old Hollywood, obviously Betty Davis, but I'm a lover of that. So when I found out that he was doing the show, I was like, and sign me up. Um, and then to find out that Janet Mo Janet Mock is behind it, she directed an episode on season one, and she is just everything and more. Um. Yeah, Hollywood. I watched Hunters on uh, Amazon Prime. Okay. That's great. I really enjoyed that. Shout out to um, Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah, shout out, shout out to Amazon Prime. Um, I'm trying to think. That's, that's, I'm really happy on the 90 Day Fiance right now. I, I, I don't say it usually publicly that I have seen 90 Day Fiance, but you I know what? I made a mistake. No, no, no. <laughs> I will, I, I'm, you're, you're you have led the way. I am going to join in and say I publicly have watched it as well. <laughs> yes. It's, it's crazy. It's just like how just like some people just like dig. It's I'll Yeah, just they just dive right in and I'm just like the, yeah. the, there's like red flags that are not only flags, they're like banners and big 
<laughs> do not marry this person. <laughs> it, it's nerve wracking watching them sometimes. I'm just, I'm just like, I don't get it. Yeah. But you know what? Kudos to them for sharing their lives. Right. Thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate you. Yeah, the TV. I appreciate it. Yeah, the TV. Like I, I, I can't. Um, I love on your show, the Polish will never there's a moment for Ben to do a musical moment. Um, do you feel like season three we can get on a full on musical episode with all y'all singing? And oh singing my god, that would be that would be super fun. That would be so fun. I mean, I don't know if any of us can really touch Ben. <laughs> I don't know. Right. He's just there to elevate. <laughs> He's just there to elevate, you know, but um, I think that would be really fun. I've always wanted to just kind of like break out in song and dance anyway in life. So if, if ever given the opportunity, I would, I, would, I would love that. I'm all here for it, but uh, I, that is above my pay grade to know. <laughs> I wish. We're going to put it out there. Listen, put it out into the universe. It's like, dear Ryan Murphy. <laughs> just cool musical episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, like last season, um, kind of the final episode. Well, shoot, we'll get this is this will come out after the show's debut. Mm -hmm. But um, season two's kind of ends off. It's kind of similar to how season one. It's kind of like a pilot for next season. Uh, so next season, or are we in the White House, or we're just like all over the country? We're <laughs> like in a dream world. Like where? Like it's like. I, I assume you got to shoot in New York this past season. Yes, we did. Yeah. Which is a nice switcher from LA. So next season is essentially BC. I just well, the trajectory that I would hope, I would love the, for, for season three, if it were to happen, to be set in DC and we've some time has passed and he is well on his way, but also still has the same team. You know, like we are, you know, possibly his cabinet. Who knows? Listen, right. Listen, the, sky, the sky's the limit. VP, um, hello. <laughs> you know, so I'm just, I'm just honestly just keeping our fingers crossed for a third season, and I hope people like season two, and you know, hopefully we'll have a White House situation soon. <laughs> soon, I'm, I'm hoping. Well, yeah. all right, back to season two. Um, we had just mentioned you guys shot in New York. I, I feel like anytime something shoots in New York, it, it just it has a different type of energy. Um. Talk about New York being like its own kind of character within the show. Yeah, I think New York in anything, any show, movie that it's in, is its own character, right? Um, it, the, the backdrop of New York in general is is beautiful. And the, and the cinematography um, in Ryan's shows has always been so grand and always like, oh, look at that shot, look at that shot, look at that shot. And that's no different... Um, in this, and I, but I also think that the, the the tone is a little bit grittier in season two, simply because you're not backed by sprawling palm trees. You're backed by cement buildings, and you sense the um, the the power behind the city and the power that these the, these characters are uh, are talking about, and climate change and, and things like that. And so you have the backdrop of New York City and the the Gotham nature of it it's 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 a lot more intense and a lot more grown up I feel so yeah it does it kind of symbolizes that you guys are grown up this season exactly yeah yeah um and our our fashion is still there so fashion in New York is great <laughs> yes I'm, I'm so glad you touched on that because the fashion is definitely elevated <laughs> on the next level for sure it definitely has a New York flair too like I'm like oh somebody got a style I'm like you yeah, know. they had me in some great coat. I was like, can I have this coat? Right. No. Nope. Yeah, that's fine. Did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. The costuming is probably one of the, the highlights of the show for me, just to look at all these outfits that are so specific to these characters. It's great. Um, and then lastly, I have to ask you, yeah. what do you, season two, what do you hope uh, is the message people take away after watching it just a general like message i think i think the general message is that going about back to the generational uh conversation that we had before um we're talking about i guess the status quo and then young people coming in to take up the charge um but also the status the the uh, 
quote unquote boomers, whatever you want to call them, um, we can be a team and make significant change. It doesn't have to be the new generation versus the old generation. Um, and I think that, that this, the message of the show is that yes, while there are some competing ideologies, um, we can come together and um, create a better place. And I hope that that is what people uh, take away from season two for sure. I think they will. I definitely felt like I could do something. Yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. I could do this, this like at least like one thing I could do. Better. One thing. <laughs> I'm like I can I can change it. I can do something. But yeah. I appreciate you taking the time. It was so good thank to see you. So you much. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Of course, everyone watch the politician. Hello. Hey, thank you. All right, bye. Bye.